In this lesson, we're going to be exploring how easy it is to add images, text boxes, and really customize the look and feel of your website. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. So I'm just going to be using the home page, so the welcome page, and then you can always select the, any one of the pages that you want, of course, from your navigation menu in the pages and insert content into those pages. So for instance, if I wanted to add a specific block of text, I can always click the insert text, and then I can customize where the text is gonna appear. And you've got your typical WYSIWYG editor options there to bold, to italicize, to align the text. You can also do lists there, as well as unordered lists, and also add in hyperlinks, so you can link out to other pages and then as well, you can link out to other URLs. So if you want to add navigation within your site to other pages of your site, that's really easy to do. And it's just uh, simply by adding in and you can edit the link at any time. You could remove the link at any time. So now this is gonna go to another page within my site. You can also delete the tile as well. So you can completely delete it. And then if you wanna add it again, you can always add it again within your web page. This is also responsive, and that's why you're not able to drag the size of the text. You're able to horizontally adjust it, but you're not able to vertically adjust multiple text boxes. And if I've got the space, I can always drag over and I can add those text boxes as needed into my project. If I've got a lot of content that I'm adding in on one side, but it's not balanced on the other side, always go over to your preview and just check how this is gonna be responding in the tablet view and in the mobile view, and make sure that this is how you want it to respond as the sizing will be readjusting automatically. So in this case, the tablet view, this was stretching out fairly long, and you might wanna adjust the widths that you've got here and also update how much text you have. So there's a little bit of a better balance as you're building out these different sections. If you wanna add in images, again, really easy to do, where you can upload an image or you can just select an image from what is available within your albums. You can also select files, as we saw before, that are available within your Google Drive. And this is the same thing for images. So I would suggest as well that you upload all of the images that you wanna work with and then once you've got the images ready to go, then you can simply add them into your Google Sites and do it all at the same time. There's some options where you can crop and you can uncrop it. The size, you can adjust the different sizing. It'll remove the excess outside of the sizing. Part of the image, you can really easily crop that out. You can insert a link just as you would with the text. And then there's also, you can replace the image just as easily as you add the image adding in alt text and adding in captions. So adding in the alt text is always a good idea. Captions are also really helpful for users to be able to tell more information about what's intended from the image. You can also add content from your drive. So any one of uh, the content that you have, so let's say you have a spreadsheet that you want it to add in. So it's as easy as double clicking, adding in, and this will add in the spreadsheet content. And then of course you can readjust the size of the spreadsheet content as needed, and you can also drag it and drop it into other sections where it's got the space for it. So if you can drag it and drop it in, have your content be presented in a number of different ways. So when again, you're ready to publish it, I'm gonna go ahead and publish it, and then I'll show you how the spreadsheet is gonna work within the published page. So when I refresh it, let's go back to the home page. So this is where I did all those updates. So the text content was here, the image was here, and then the spreadsheet is really interesting because this is a live view of the spreadsheet, content that's contained within the spreadsheet, and it's being output within this type of format, navigate and slide over and see different pieces of the content as with all of the different lines, but you see the content that's being presented within the spreadsheet. So that's why it's also important to make sure that you do have the right headings if you are sharing your spreadsheet within your Google site. And you can always open that up and this is only if the user has permissions to see the content that they can open it up within the actual spreadsheet editor from Google. If they don't have permissions, they're not gonna be able to open that. And one important thing to note is, so I've just opened up the sites within guest view, and you can see that the Google account has been refused. So that 
just because you're sharing a spreadsheet, that user still needs to have permission to see the spreadsheet content unless you're sharing the spreadsheet to all and then that's another option as well if you want to share the spreadsheet. And this is gonna go into the spreadsheet permissions. So going into the spreadsheet itself, the shareable link so anyone with the view can link it, open up the guest window and share it. They're gonna be able to see the content that's contained within the spreadsheet. So you've got two different layers of permissions that are working within the Google files. So keep that in mind when you do share the files and also the easiest way to tell what users can see and what users cannot see. The default users is to open up the guest window in your browser and just see what is available. Go to the URL, publish the content, go to the URL and see what they're gonna be able to see on your site.